Morning and uh, welcome to Wales. I'm just going to try and get in the sunshine actually. Um, so basically, uh, my name's Malcolm um, and I'm basically here going to run through some brewing today. Um, and I'm basically going to brew a, a, brewing a Pilsen malt. Um, hopefully it'll work out okay. So just where the sun is, there's some uh, just bad timing this morning. Anyway, so basically got the water on the boil in my hot liquor tank. Uh, we've got a mash tun and we've got a, a kettle which we're going to use later. Uh, we've got about 15 kilos of malt. I'm aiming to make about 60... Uh, 50, 60 litres of, well maybe maybe 70 litres of uh, a beer today. Um, as I say, it's going to be a, a Belgian style a Pilsner malt, a Pilsner if I can, um, but we'll see. I'm using Belgian Pilsner malt, I'm using Hallertau Middle Fruit hops, so I'm using German hops actually, so uh, it's going to be a lager style beer I think. Um, and I'm using uh, dried yeast, an S23 uh, lager yeast. i um, got to run through the process, it's a fairly simple process today. Um, we're going to boil the water, we're going to do a single stage infusion mash. Um, and I'll go through some of the things and I'll do some of the figures I've got for that as we go through. Um, and we're basically going to do the mash uh, fairly shortly uh, and then basically uh, take as much of the water off we can. We're aiming for about a beer or about, I don't think too strong. I've made a couple of lagers recently that have come out 5% five, 5 plus. I want something around about 4.5%, 4 to 4.5% today. Um, and so this is not a recipe I've done before. Um, I've been brewing about a year. I've got four fairly strong, solid recipes that I've used. Uh, a, a mild, uh, a bitter, um, a, a sort of Vienna lager, and also a Kolsch. Uh, but this is something I'm going to try something different today. And I'm brewing outside because A, it's a lovely day, and B, I'm going to try and clear the, um, the lean-to brewery area up around the back of the house. That needs a bit of a clear up, so I'm going to do that as well. As the afternoon, well, as the morning goes on, it's about uh, just coming up to nine o'clock now, so it's a nice and early start. Um, but a brew day takes um, six to seven hours. Um, uh, we're in the middle of COVID 19 lockdown, so you tend to do it on your own. Um, my camera woman, who was going to give me out, is still in bed, I think, but we'll wake her up in a minute. And um, we'll see we get on. So I'm going to do a few bit of filming, a bit of, and a few notes, just to keep you interested. Um, any comments, obviously, please let me know. Um, you know, I'm fairly new to brewing. Uh, standards going up, the quality's going up. Um, and let's see how we get on. But I'll uh, do some videos as we go on, and I'll do some clips as we go on through the um, through the brew process. As I say, so the HLT now I've got about uh, 85 liters of water boiling there. Um, that should be enough. Well, that'd be enough for the mash. Um, might need a bit more for the uh, spark, so I'll add a bit more water and put it back on to boil while the mash is running. So I'm aiming to mash this. It's about 66 degrees. Um, the, the the pellet of the grains about 66 degrees for about 60 minutes, maybe longer, maybe 75. Um, we'll see how the conversion goes in terms of uh, running that off and then we'll go through, a, 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 I'll recycle the mash for a bit. I tend to do that by hand, I will do it by hand because I'm outside today uh, rather than a, using a pump. And then, uh, which of all our fingers I think is one way of doing it, recycling is a better British way of saying it. Uh, we'll go through that, uh, then we'll sparge it. Um, we'll probably look to get around 70 litres, 75 litres of, of, li of liquid into the kettle if we can to boil. Uh, and we'll do the boil for the the liquid's going to be about 90 minutes. Uh, let's see where it goes, and then we'll crash that down to as low as possible. Now, a bit of a challenge of getting from a boiling water down to, I want to get it to, into the fermenter about 13 degrees if I can. So it's going to be a bit tough. I've uh, got a heat exchanger, and we'll show that bit of kit later, how I'm going to do that, and then we'll run through it. But as I say, let's see how the day goes. Lovely day. The sun's going to go around in a minute, so it might be a bit easier for filming. So uh, but it's actually a lovely morning, so uh, it's all good. Okay, well, let's see how the day goes on. Thank you. We're getting there. Hopefully, about uh, we'll get to 66 degrees with about the water we've got. It's looking good. So, Got pretty good out there, I think. Hopefully, uh, around about 66 degrees. Uh, as I say, looking pretty good. Yeah, bang on. 
66 degrees. So we used about, we had about for about 15 kilos, used about yeah, 25 litres of water to get to the mash to that level. So hopefully it'll be okay. Um, and then see how it goes in terms of there. So we're going to leave that for about 60 minutes. Probably I'm going to give it 75 minutes. So time now is about quarter past nine. So come back about half past ten, and we'll see how that's developing in terms of that. And I'll put some more water back into the HLT, uh, into the hot liquor tank to, to boil up, to get the temperature back up, and then we can use that for sparging. So the strike water is around about 84 degrees. Uh, that seems to work okay. And for today, so that's given us a uh, with the volume and the weight sort of. Uh, the temperature 66 degrees which I'm pretty happy with. We'll keep an eye on it just in case it goes up or down. We can always add a little bit more water but I'm pretty comfortable with where we are with that at the moment so all good. All right let's carry on. Okay so uh, it's uh, about half past ten now and so uh, about about 75 minutes for the mash to go. Uh, it's been it started around 66 degrees we've been holding the mash at 66 and it just raised up to about 68 degrees uh, it's towards the end anyway so uh, what we need to do is potentially now recycle the mash and so to do that um, you can do this keep with the mash so what you're trying to do um, and as I say camera woman is here as well now so um, hopefully we'll get some pictures so what we're going to do is going to I use like a two litre jug there's a number of ways of doing it of taking uh, basically what you want to do is take some runoff from the bottom of the uh, the mash tun okay and basically what you'll see is that the the mash as well, it's got quite bits, it's got a lot of bits in it and lots, it's, it's um, oh come on then, that's it, so basically it's got bits in it, it's quite sort of dirty colour. So what we're going to do for about 15 minutes or so is basically then take that out of the bottom of the, of the thing and you can come back and then basically I'm just using the mash uh, stirrer just to go over the top, basically to recycle it. So what we're going to do here hopefully is the aim is basically to get this to run clear. Now you can do it with a pump and I've done it with a pump as before. The trouble is the pump I've got, um, it's got quite a heavy sort of uh, suck on it and what it seems to be doing, it doesn't let the um, the sort of uh, the grain bed then basically become solid. So what I'm trying to do is get a nice grain bed to form at the same time. Now looking at the colour, the colour's looking good this as well. Now the trouble is because I'm doing this manually, it's um, it's going to be fairly, uh, it's fairly labour intensive and obviously if you can do it with a with a pump or do it automatic and obviously you can use um, a heat exchange um, recycling uh, system right herm system basically so you can, you can rig it up to that but as I say I haven't quite invested in that yet so what we're doing now is basically like, whilst I was uh, the, the mash tun was um, the mash was there for 75 minutes I poured a little bit more water we've got about 70 70 litres here now at around about 76 degrees is the sparge temperature I want to aim at. Now, I haven't looked to mash out um, in this as well. I could have put some more water in to get this to mash out. And so that's the other option you can do. And I've, so basically some people recommend is you just basically finish off the sort of um, the mash by raising the temperature up to about 76 degrees in the mash tun. Now I've done that sometimes and I've done it, I've done it sometimes and not done it. Um, I'll do it without this time and then see where we end up. But okay, well I'm going to carry on uh, recycling for a bit and then we'll come back for the sparge in a moment. Right, okay, so I've uh, basically recycled this a few times now, so probably for the last 15-20 minutes. And as you can see, now when it's running through, and I'll show you this, the running through, it's, uh, there's no bits in it, it's a lot clearer. There's a bit of protein haze in there as well, but overall, but actually not too bad. So basically, and then on the top, what you've got by recycling is trying to get the mash in the bottom to form a, a firm bed, so a bit of a mash bed. So basically, so we're just going to, I've just been just basically doing that over the last, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. So probably 15 minutes, half an hour works. Now, what we're going to do now is I've boiled the water to about 76 degrees and we're now going to do a sparge. So I've got a small sort of homemade sparge arm here, basically, which allows me to basically take the hot water into the top of the grain at the same time I'm going to take the, the wort out from the bottom. Now I've got the small bucket here, I can't run it straight into the kettle because the problem being is that, uh, well, I haven't got enough fall and I've just where I'm outside. So ideally you want it straight into the container. But if I run it straight into the bucket, so the aim is to sparge quite slowly. So I'm going to try and sparge over the next sort of hour or so slowly. And basically just start running off slowly at the bottom at the same time then with the HLT is to run basically into the sparge arm at this end, okay? So 
And so what we're going to do is basically take the hot water onto the top without disturbing the grains too much. Spire on sometimes goes round, it doesn't. I need this is the, the next bit of things that needs to be modified, but basically what you've got then is a, a, a small sparge coming out there. It will sometimes go around, but it just probably isn't balanced that well. But uh, it's thinking about it. Yeah, it's probably because it's not balanced here, it's probably not flat. But anyway, well, that's fine. So all we want to do is to make sure that doesn't trickle on the top. So at the same time now, um, what I'll do is also take a reading of the gravity of the wall as it comes out. So I'm using a refractometer to do this and a syringe to get that out. Basically, it goes onto the refractometer and we'll make sure that doesn't go back in the wall. You just basically get rid of that. So, and then you'll just do a quick sighting of what that is. So. Actually, what we what you expect is it to be quite high, and that's actually got a specific gravity of, well, 10887, so really quite a high gravity to start with. Obviously, you'd expect it with 15 kilos of, well, nearly 16 kilos of malt in there as well. So we're going to leave this run, and slowly, and I'm going to put this, as we go through, into the kettle, and then we'll start to boil the kettle when, when we start getting about 20 litres or so through from this. So we're going to carry on sparging for a bit, and as I say, just want to take a while to do it, but hopefully we're going to try and collect as much water as possible. And because it's all grain, you've got to boil the whole lot. So we're going to try and boil the whole. So we're trying to get to, ideally, about 70 litres of water to go in the kettle, maybe slightly higher. I want to get it down so that we have a specific gravity, an original gravity going in the kettle of around 1040. So 1038, 1040 would be great. That would make a nice light drinking lager. Depending on that, we could probably get something around about 4.4, 4.5% is what the ABV alcohol by content if we can. But that's the plan. Okay. Well, I'll come back in a minute. I'm going to kind of leave this sparging for a bit, keep an eye on it, and then start the kettle running. And we'll come back a bit when the kettle's done. Okay. You're out. Right. Okay. Good. So uh, time now is. Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, just about 12 o'clock. So we spent about an hour sparging through this. So basically, we have about 16 kilos of um, uh, sort of of, of, of uh, malt well of uh, the Bristol bits there so we must have run through so we're up to about 70 litres just over 70 litres in the kettle now um, specific gravity is running around about uh, 1048 1045 I want to go to 1040 specific gravity so I'll add a bit more in the boil so as you can see we're getting to the end of this um, I'll stop we ran out of sparge water about 70 litres of sparge water but I don't want to tip this up or move it because I don't want to keep it quite fresh and clean so Basically, I'll add this now, and then we'll test where we are in terms of the uh, thing. So, I've already started this to boil because of where we are. So, we've got plenty going on here. It's warming up. It's up to about 90 degrees where we are now. So, we've got the uh, syringe. Put it in the refractometer. And let's see where we are in terms of the, uh, in terms of the gravity. So actually that's coming up at 10.43, so we're pretty good. So I might just put it, we're up to, got it just under about 75 litres. If I've got any more left in here, we'll run it through. We'll just take a bit more off the end, just to get it down to about 10.44, and then we should be good. So the boil is going to take 90 minutes, so when it comes to a boil, you want a good rolling boil on it, just to clear all the, the crap off the top. And actually the boil does take a lot of the sort of horrible flavours and some of the stuff that come out of it. You're basically trying to get the hot break, at the top so take the take the stuff off the top and then go from that so hopefully we'll do a boil about 80 litres should get about 70 litres then in the fermenter hopefully because we'll probably lose a bit in the boil and maybe a bit out the bottom of the kettle so a 90 minute boil um, after 30 minutes i with 60 minutes to go we'll add the hops gonna add, add i've got to work out the brit i did a calculation on the bittering we're looking for about uh 120 grams of hops so quite light of hops sorry uh, and we'll go from there. Anyway, so, oh yeah, there's the uh, the, the previous <laughs> brew. <laughs> there we go, it's good stuff. Anyway, so basically what we're going to do then is basically run through that and then we should be, I would say, ready and then we'll, we'll go and do the break for that. But I'll uh, show a couple of things with the hop going in as we go through making the boil. Okay, good. Right, back later. Good. Okay, so it's now about uh, just gone 12.30. So the boil has started. So we've got a, a boiling uh, sort of wart. I'll just turn that up a bit actually. Uh, we've got a boiling wort, so we just reached the boil. So what we tried to do, it's already had the, the hot break. We had a quite, we'll just turn that up a bit and we'll get that to boil. What you want is a good rolling boil uh, on the wort. Uh, so we've got about just about 80 litres in here, so quite a lot in a way. 
turn that up and we'll go. So the plan is that we've got a 90 minute boil, okay. Uh, we've got to add, these are Halatau hops, these are, um, we've got about 130 grams, which I reckon is going to give us the right sort of percentage, IBU percentage, just to give us the right flavour for the lager. So we're going to put those in in about 25 minutes now. And then we'll put in what is a protoflac tablet. So you can use Irish moss or protoflac with 15 minutes of the boil left. Now I tend to write these all out in the book as I start. And as soon as we get then to the end of the boil, I also with the liquid, with the dried yeast, I'll also hydrate it. So I'll, I'll do a couple of pictures of that later. But basically I'll hydrate the yeast based on the volume we're going to get. And then we'll, when the boil's finished, what the aim is to do then is to do the cold break and then to get that down to about more well, 13 to 15 degrees if I can. Uh, need quite a bit of water today to put through the heat exchanger to get that down but the aim is to get to 15 degrees and then into the fermenter and then pitch the yeast, the hydrated yeast. So still plenty of time to go but it's good. So as I say we've got the boil is, boil is underway so about an hour and a half, 90 minutes to the boil. That'll get rid of all the sort of nasty flavours off the top and everything else. Um, as for the, 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 the barley, the used grains, uh, you can use it for a number of things. Um, I found actually it works really well on my garden. Um, so actually it's going to go in as a sort of top manure and a conditioner for the look for the garden I've got. So it's, it's, that's, that seems to be the most place I'm using it. It did uh, feed the neighbours pigs as well at some point. So that's the main thing. And then the main thing is as well with the, we'll go through it, is to then clear things up as well as we go through and start doing a bit of tidying up. And we'll be back later as the boil continues. Right, welcome back. Uh, we're most of the way to the boil. We've got 15 minutes to go left in the boil. So I'm going to add um, basically some crushed protofact tablet, um, which I've put in here. So basically the protofact, you can use the Irish moss or protoflac. I've had good results with this. It seems to work okay. Um, as we, if we look at the boil now, uh, the hops went in a little while ago. Uh, well, on the 60 minute mark, with 60 minutes to go. Um, basically you've got the hop flowers and stuff. So you don't use a lot of Halatau hops. So it's because of the length of time and it's quite low alpha acid it sort of gives the right amount of bittering to the flavour. So you add this in and that will then help uh, that settle. So we should be then flame out in 15 minutes now and then basically then what we're going to do, what you set up to go uh, is to run it through the heat exchanger uh, into this. Now the fermenter is in the, the, brew, uh, the brewery area so won't run it straight into the fermenter. We'll have to pump it from, uh, from the, the bucket here. Now the aim is to get this as cool as possible so I'm going to run quite a lot of water through uh, I collect the water, I keep the water as it comes through because I use that for washing up. So because the water comes out hot, obviously you're getting this down as cool as possible. Hopefully we can get it as low as possible and then uh, hopefully get it to 13 or so before I pitch the yeast. That's the plan. But uh, anyway, we'll see how it goes. So we're just running the uh, heat exchanger now. So letting the, uh, the wort come out from the uh, kettle fairly slowly. As I say, the aim is to try and get this down as... Uh, as much as possible uh, to hopefully around less than 15 degrees if I can but to say the water's going into the bucket I'm going to transfer it into the fermenter afterwards but um, we'll keep an eye on the temperature as we go and as I say I'm keeping some of the water here in the in the kettle here just basic well keep it in the HLT and I'll use that for uh, clearing up and washing up uh, later on so there we go so because uh, this time um, we're brewing outside, and so obviously the brew room here is a bit clearer. I've got to take the water, this is the last of it actually, I'm going to pump it into the fermenter. So just turn the pump on. Just a small food pump. Just going to pump that through into the fermenter. And then we're going to look at the state of the yeast and pitch the yeast. So earlier on I uh, took uh, four packets of S23 Safflaga yeast, uh, each packet does about 10 to 15 litres so I put four packets partly because that's all I've had and what I've done I've put them in uh, some some lukewarm water, pre-boiled lukewarm water, um, no more say 20 degrees, um, basically just to get the yeast hydrated before pitching. Um, I used to pitch it straight and it says in the packet you can pitch it straight from the packet but actually hydrating it seems to give good results. Now S23 it's a lager yeast, it's a bottom fermenter yeast, so it's going to take a, it's going to be going a lot slower, or wanted to go a lot slower than, um, than basically a top fermented uh, ale yeast. So we're going to try and start it as cool as possible. Now, uh, here's the fermenter. I'm just attaching the uh, thing. So the fermenter is in a brew fridge. Oops, sorry, fermenter's here in a brew fridge. Okay, so I've now filled the fermenter. So we've got about 70 litres of beer inside the, uh, the brew fridge. Um, this is a, a PTFE uh, conical fermenter 
uh, which I got from eBay uh, from Poland, about a, I think about a hundred pound. Uh, okay, so it's good size. Uh, it fits nicely into this fridge, and the fridge itself um, is controlled up here by um, an S20, uh, well, an a T STC 1000 um, uh, con temperature controller. Now it's a bit warmer than I wanted. It's come out at 19. Um, that's okay to pitch the yeast, but as I say, I've set that to cool. So hopefully this is going to cool down. So. Yeah, it's a bit lively, a bit higher than I want. It's going to take a little while to cool off, but I'll pitch the yeast and we'll see how it goes. It's not real a harm, but I, this should then, by you know, a couple of hours, it should be down below 15, and we should go go from there as we chill the yeast down. And I'll pitch the yeast. I'm going to oxygenate it as well. Uh, I put some oxygen in the top, although it's fairly well aerated. It's always a good idea. I had a few failings from that uh, when I did the yeast before, but let's hear it goes. So, uh, the brew day comes to an end, I hope. Uh, anyway, I'm we're recording this. Um, so what happened? How did we get on? Um, yes, good. Uh, managed to brew about 70 litres. We got uh, bang on with specific gravity. Um, but from there, you know, that uh, it stopped, sort of went into the venter about 10.40, 10.41. So that's okay, happy with that. Managed to brew about 70 litres. Um, we've basically got it into the venter a bit warmer than I would have liked. I wanted to kind of get around 13 to 15. I think it was about 18, 19, so the gauge one said 19, one said 18, so a bit warm, but I put it into the brew fridge and that will then chill out. So um, it's a fairly rough and ready method I use, um, getting good results, um, just really got to see how it then shapes up and see what this brew turns like out. I was going to sit here with a beer, but um, I just moved the keg of the previous lager and I've just made it go on cloudy and I didn't want to sort of show it um, in its in its unfined state. It was in a really good state earlier and I might put a stiller on a note of the lager up afterwards but it was looking a lot better before I moved it around but anyway um, and that's it so we'll see we'll see how it goes um any questions any comments just let me know um, and as I say uh, you know we'll, we'll see how it goes fairly rough and ready in terms of brewing style and method but the results are getting consistent and getting good and hopefully we'll see uh, you know something and um, I, I guess the thing that I've done this time around I used to brew years and years ago what's happened this time is a brewing with decent kit so the power brewing kit that I've been using it's worked very well, um, it's uh, pretty robust. I had a 50 litre kit to start with, and now they expanded into a 100 litre kit, again off eBay. I think some, the trouble with the 150 litre kit, you can move it around by hand. It's, you know, you're gonna weigh 30, 40 kilos with 30, 40 litres of beer there. If you're doing it with the 100 litre kit, you need a pump or you've gotta think a bit carefully or have a couple of people to move things around. So it's not such an easy thing to do. You can make big batches, but those big batches aren't necessarily you know, it, it, it's easy because obviously it takes just as long to make 30 litres as it does to make 60, 70 litres um, in a way. Okay, the sparge might take a bit longer, but it's all there or thereabouts anyway. So the effort is worth making bigger batches. And as long as you've got friends and other people as well as yourself who can drink it all, because it is quite a lot of beer. It's good. Um, I guess in lockdown it helps. Uh, I don't have to keep rushing to the supermarket for more beer and I can live off the protein and the uh, carbohydrate intake of beer alone if I was putting my mind to it anyway. Um, so that's been good. Um, the ingredients, as I say, I've been buying most of my uh, malt and the hops and also the yeast from the malt miller, um, the maltmiller.co.uk. I thoroughly recommend them. Uh, great service and they've been really good during the lockdown period as well. I think um, home brewing uh, demand has gone up through the roof and uh, supplies have obviously become very hard and people are trying to work in a, in a sort of... Um, a socially distanced way so it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, you know a bit like bread making people are making beer as well as bread um, in fact probably the yeast is easier to get hold of for beer making than it is for bread making um, but anyway so that, there's all these things to think about but anyway hope for, hopefully you found the uh, videos the video useful um, and as I say I'll try and do something again it's been nice to sit outside it's been a lovely day here in Wales it's probably about 18 degrees um, and probably before I will have a beer I might just go out on the pedal bike for my uh, bit of uh, my hour or so of uh, of exercise uh, to make up for the day but okay thank you very much for watching